Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and with me is Sheikh Ali Maash. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Salaam alaikum, Rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikh, over the last episodes, we've been discussing homes and we'll be discussing the different categories of homes and, and what it is obligatory to pay upon. We've been discussing um, you know, when you should pay, how you should pay. Uh, a question arose. And it's to, mainly to do with students, but I guess it can be with anyone that if a student purchases uh, items such as books, which he intends to use in the future, does he have to pay homes on those uh, items which he intends to use in the future, but maybe he hasn't used them yet? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد المواله الطيبين الطاهرين Uh, if an individual buys some books, uh, be it a student or even somebody who wants to read books, uh, someone who has the, uh, the habit or the interest in reading as a hobby, for example, and that individual buys these books and he keeps them in his bookshelf, but never uses them until, let's say, one or two or three years. According to the Sayyid's opinion that, um, as a precaution, the one must pay hummus on those unused books after the, the year in which uh, the hummus is due. Uh, in this case, they have to pay uh, the hummus for those unused uh, books. MashaAllah. Um, Shaykh, what about if I purchased books I intended to use uh, but then it turns out I don't need to use them later on. So I've, I've, pu I've purchased an item with the intention of using it, but now I don't need to use it. Well, what do I do in that situation? Do I have to pay khumus on that? Um, likewise, yes, you have to still pay khumus uh, because now these are liable to khumus. These are parts of um, your wealth in which you haven't used. And as the Holy Quran stated, so you gain these in the means of, let's say, money, and you spend them, and you never use, use them. So you still have that uh, unused wealth or money or assets or belongings after uh, the end of the khumsir. You haven't used them. If you use them during the khumsir, that's fine. But when the due date arrives, you have to pay khumus on those assets or belongings or in your scenario the, the books um, hummus because you haven't used them they are now an excess and extra wealth that you don't need them you didn't need them in, in the hummus year before that so in this case you have to pay the hummus after that you can use it or you can even keep it away uh, as long as you have paid the hummus then they become halal and tahir to use I see, so it doesn't really matter whether your intention was to use or not to use or if your intention was that I need it and now I don't need it. As long it is, as it is surplus, you have to pay khums on it. Exactly, the intention uh, is there, but practically you have to apply uh, and utilize these items uh, to use the money that you have gained from income or profit. If you don't use it, even after the intention to use this wealth, let's say some people try to um, um, save money to buy a house, and that might take 10 years. So that accumulated money and gathered money should be paid khums on. When the value goes up every year, you pay for the khums for the excess and the extra value of that money, for example. The more you bring in, the more you pay khums, and so forth. So you have to make sure that um, whatever you have as a belongings and uh, assets and property, if not, uh, there's no khums paid on them, then you have to pay the khums. And then afterwards, they become halal, that's fine. Ah, sounds excellent. Sheikh, now, in regards to gifts, what if someone obtains wealth through a gift and 
Um, this is surplus to his yearly expenditure. Does he have to pay khums on, on the gifts? When someone gets the gift, if they open the gift and use it straight away or, or during that year, that's fine. It's for them, they own it, as if you get money or income or a profit and you just spend it. However, if you keep that gift for the whole year and the date for uh, paying the hummus arrives and you haven't used that gift, then of course the hummus will be applied on this gift, an item which is unused. Then you have to, if you know the price, whatever the price is, you pay 20% of the price of the gift. Otherwise you have to value it and then you take out the 20% of the hummus of that unused gift on the due date of the, uh, of the hummus payment. What if the gift is, is money um, and you know, I haven't used that money, then do I have to pay khums on that as well? Yes, the same applies. Be it a money or be it uh, um, an item, a tangible item, something you can use actually. Um, that money, let's say you get money in the three main Eids in Eid al-Fatr, Adha and Ghadir and you want to save them, you don't want to spend them. Now you have afterwards, the next month, let's say in Muharram, is the due date for the khums payment. If you haven't spent this money you got from the Eid, then you have to pay the khums, of course, one-fifth of that money, and you keep the rest to spend. What about with a gift which hasn't been used for a whole year? So maybe perfume or aftershave or, or you know, clothes that we haven't worn. These were gifts. We didn't purchase these. Do we have to pay khums on that? Yes, of course. Again, you have to see the price of these uh, gifts um, or you value them, see how much they are now in, in the market. And then uh, you calculate and you take out the one-fifth or the 20% khumus of those gifts, which uh, they were never used. And you pay the khumus and then it's, it's yours. You can use them afterwards. MashaAllah. Shaykh, now with these gifts, should I pay my khumus straight away as soon as I get the gift? Or do I have to wait until you know, the due date, the fiscal year, and pay my khumus then? The gifts, when uh, they are given to somebody, then they can use them straight away. That's fine. Um, but the khumus becomes wajib and obligatory if the, if the due date arrives and you haven't used the, the gift. Uh, so let's say if I get a gift today and the due date of, of my khumus is next month, I can easily use it now. And uh, if it's a uh, perfume, I can wear it or clothes and so forth. Um, but when it's unused and were kept by uh, the due date or even after that period, then I have to pay homos for it. So it depends. If it's within that year uh, and before the date of the homos payment, then you can straight away use it. It's yours. Mm -hmm. But be because you haven't used it and it stayed for the whole year, then you have to pay the khumus of that uh, gifted item. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, a lot of people, uh, especially back home in, 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 you know, in the East, um, they like to stockpile on food. Now, you know, a lot of farmers, especially with their businesses and, and also with the lifestyle in the village, they, they will keep food, dry food, flour, rice, uh, wheat, for three months, six months, maybe even up to a year, they stockpile, especially when they expect, you know, maybe there's going to be some famine or there's going to be, the weather's not really going to go in, into their, in their favour and, and they need to like you know, ration their, their stock. Do we have to pay khums on, on that, on, on the food that we keep as supplies? Again, the Sayyid mentions in his book that um, if they remain as a surplus, in this case, the one, as a precaution, must pay the hummus. Uh, let's say you have bought a big bag of flour and rice and you haven't used them. Um, on the due date of the hummus payment, you have to calculate to see how much the price, the current price of this flour bag and, and the rice bag, for example. Not the, the, the price of last year, no, this year. What is the price? So. You calculate the price and you take out 20% of the hummus of the unused uh, uh, food 
in this new year of, of the hummus. Um, and then you pay the hummus, and then you can use them. And the next year, you don't have to pay anything because you have already paid hummus for the, even if they remain for the, to, uh, till next year, uh, the same uh, bags of flour and rice. You still can use them uh, next year without paying the hummus, but this year you have to pay the hummus mm. because you haven't used them. So this year, it's a due date of the hummus. You haven't used these bags of rice and flour. You take out 20% hummus, you pay them, and you keep them. You can keep them for, another, for the next five years, that's fine. Okay. But you pay the hummus, خلاص. no issue with it. Okay, so I see. Like we were discussing before, and as well, hummus you only pay once uh, exactly. on an item in a lifetime. So you pay the hummus one time on the stock, and you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the, of, of the duration. Sheikhna, jewelry, uh, apparently, says so a woman's best friend. Um, if you purchase jewelry um, and you were using it, let's say, you know, you purchased uh, jewelry for you know, your, 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 your partner, your spouse, um, and they no longer use it anymore. They, you know, it's maybe it's out of fashion, or um, you know, they, they maybe haven't got around to wearing so wearing it again. Do we have to pay khums on that item? So jewelry which is no longer used anymore. Do we have to, does khums apply to this? Yes, of course. Again, you have the same issue. Um, if you have bought these jewelry and you, you never use them, you have to apply the khums. Or sometimes it happens that um, they no longer no longer considered to be as to the status of the woman to wear them. Um, these abandoned uh, items in which they don't use anymore. Then of course, when you have the the yearly uh, the uh, the hummus year or the, the due date arrives, then they have to pay the hummus on these items that they haven't used or they were no, more, no longer considered to be as the status to wear for, for the woman. So of course, the homes will apply, as you mentioned in the question. Ahsan, Sheikh, mashallah. Sheikh, let's move our conversation on. I mean, we've discussed homes and, and the categories that it applies on. Uh, let's look at homes as to where it's actually spent. So once the homes is collected uh, by our grand maraja and our grand authorities, how is it actually distributed amongst the Islamic community? How, where do they spend the hummus money? Um, as I've mentioned, the hummus is actually one-fifth, which means 20%. Now, the first 10% of the hummus will be spent on the Sayyids, which is known as to be Sayyid's share. So the first share goes to the Sayyids. And of course, the Sayyids are those who are the... Um, grandsons of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and his pure family. And um, they belong to this sacred family. Um, those are allowed to get the hummus if they are poor or if they are orphan and poor, the Sayyids who are orphan and poor, or if the Sayyid is stranded in his journey and he has lost his money, he's got nothing to spend on. So they can give him from this share, the share of the 10% of the hummus to the Sayyids who are in need of money, in need of wealth and somehow. They are poor, they haven't got uh, the right clothing, the right uh, food, the right place to live, for example. Whatever is needed by that individual, 10% of that share is given to the Sayyids. So are you, are you saying 10% of the hummus or 10% of the 20, which is technically half so half of the homes is actually dedicated exactly. and allocated for the Sayyids. Exactly. So for example, if you pay this year uh, homes of the 1,000 pounds, which is 200 pounds, right? Yes, 200 pounds. This 200 pounds will be divided into two, two shares. This 100 pound, the first one will go to the Sayyids. Mm -hmm. And the next share, or the second share, the second 100 pounds will go to the Imam. Okay. The Imam's share, as they call it. Sahm mm al-Imam. -hmm. That is Sahm al-Sada in Arabic, and Sahm al-Imam. Now, the second share, which is Sahm al-Imam, or the Imam's share, of course, uh, because we don't have access to the Imam of Zaman of our time, Ajallah Farajahu al-Sharif, this money should be given to the fully qualified Mujtahid and Marja, the one uh, is in which we do taqlid and, and follow and the one who meets all the criteria and uh, the conditions of being a mujtahid and marja. 
Um, otherwise, if somebody has some kind of um, um, activities, let's say they run orphan house, okay. for example, care house, for example, they build mosques, Islamic centers, Husseini, and so forth, they can take the ijazah to spend the imam's share on these activities and charitable so work. So little, little projects um, exactly. to help, do cha charitable, charitable projects. projects. Exactly. But what about other ones? For example, um, Islamic centers? They all apply, of course. Husseini, Islamic centers, okay. mosques. But you have to take the ijazah from the marja to be able to spend this amount, the, the second share, which is the yeah. imam's share, alayhi yeah. salam, and the 10% to be spent on these issues. The Sayyid share is only for the Sayyids. Mm -hmm. So in both cases, whatever you want to do uh, to spend on, you must take the ijazah and permission from the marja, from the scholar, to be able to spend any of those money on your own projects, charitable pro projects or religious projects. You have to still go back and ask them permission. Otherwise, they must both pay it, the 20% paid directly to the marja himself, mm -hmm. who can take care of uh, the spending on uh, the right courses and the right causes. Sheikh, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, well, wouldn't some people argue that maybe this is a bit biased and this is a bit unfair that the Sayyids have access to the Khums but non-Sayyids non don't have access and maybe they need the money and they need some form of charity? You see, um, because they belong to this uh, lineage of the Prophet and his peer family, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designates a specific source of income for them. So instead of getting the money from the uh, uh, charity, normal sadaqah, they would get through this way. Mm -hmm. And we have narrations for that as well. That's why, why the Sayyids get this share and not the sadaqah in which uh, the general people would get it. And of course, we had many incidents that uh, when the caravan and the captives of Imam al Hussein the women and children who are taken from Karbala to Kufa, yes. people start to give sadaqah to, mm -hmm. uh, as a means of food yes. uh, to the kids and children. Mm -hmm. And one of the ladies, the sacred ladies, came and she removed that yes. uh, food or the mm -hmm. dates from the mouth of the children. And she said, sadaqah haramun alayna. That sadaqah is haram on us. us yes. We cannot take sadaqah. Mm -hmm. So these are godly. Uh, designated rules and ahkam that we have to uh, appreciate and, and respect and abide with. So this is some kind of, a, we can say, um, an honor given to uh, the family of the, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, excellent. Shaykhna, if one is saving money but is through managing his expenditure, so it's not as if he's spending extravagantly and living his comfortable lifestyle, he's actually what we call tightening the budget. He's looking where he spends his money um, and he's trying to save money. On those savings, does he have to pay khums on those savings? Again, if they remain as a surplus, unused money or unused wealth, let's say, uh, they still have to pay khums, of course. Let's say even if you buy new sofa or new furniture and you never use them, or let's say they decide to change them, for example, and they keep them some, somewhere in the store, away from uh, the usage. These are all known to be as surplus and uh, excess wealth, unused wealth. Then the khumus will apply on the due date of, of the payment of the khumus. Oh, mashallah. He, so he was better off actually just spending the money rather than trying to, you know, um, tighten his budget. Ahsan yeah. Sheikhna, thank you very much for today's discussion. And thank you for all of you for joining us, inshallah. Ahkam SOS will be back uh, with another discussion on Khums, inshallah. See you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.